morning and welcome to the first in our series of Advent Conklins. I'm joined this evening by Olivia, Tom, Lee and Steve. And Steve will be talking to us shortly, reflecting on the Bible passage for this evening. We begin with our Bible passage. She's going to be read to us by Tom. The reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, starting at the 14th verse. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Thank you, Tom. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing unto you, my God and judge. The advent of Jesus. The arrival of Jesus in the world created different challenges for the disciples of John the Baptist and to the Jewish religious authorities. From the beginning of chapter three, Nicodemus is forced to become a student in order to understand being born again in the spirit. And the reader is asked to participate in a social challenge that distinguishes between evil and truth, light and dark, and between a love of self and the love of God. John's gospel also helps us to become aware of the challenge of God, the love of God, the exposure of humanity to the light of Jesus, and the concept of the one who does the truth, or if not, resides in darkness. Starting in the 14th verse, as you heard Tom read, Jesus compares himself with Moses. Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so that everyone who was bitten by a snake previously, when they saw that snake, they would be healed and saved. And not unlike what happened with Jesus, who was also lifted up upon a cross in order to be raised from the dead, to ascend eventually to heaven and to return one day a second time. The Greek translation of the phrase lifted up is key to understanding that Jesus would be crucified, which is of course necessary for our salvation. Jesus knew that. Both Moses and Jesus's work in the world was obviously redemptive, but the big difference was the work of Jesus was dependent upon himself and also God, whereas Moses depended solely upon God. So the difference carries on further because Jesus was lifted up. Lifted up for what? For death, for suffering and defeat at that particular time of the crucifixion. But the larger cosmological picture, which what John is trying to get us to think about, is the aspect of the cross meant also exaltation, majesty and glorification. So we can see that God's love is revealed in whom he gave to the world. The giving of his son was the expression of his love, a personal love embodied in human flesh, but of course also divine, which allowed those who believed in Jesus to have eternal life. The narrator of the gospel, most likely John, but of course there have been many redactions, gives an extended reflection about the meaning of why belief in the Son of God will give that person eternal life. He explains the term, in this way, God loved the world, which was used as an adverb of degree, meaning a marker of a relatively high 
degree of the measurement of God's love for the world. God loved the world markedly and significantly and still does. The past tense used implies to the reader that the statement made in verse 16 is a retrospective summary intended to provide explanation that God's sole motivation behind the words and actions of Jesus, who is the word of God, is God's love for the world. Everything Jesus does and did, is and was and still will be is rooted in the love of God. The cost of which to Jesus was that he would embrace human weakness, human suffering, physical, psychological, social and familial when separated from his father, mockery and the shame of hanging in agony on a cross. And John gives further clarification about the sending of the son, which was not at first to condemn, the Greek being krine, but to save others, sothe. Here is an opportunity to understand how the various titles of Jesus, Messiah, Son of Man, the Christ, Lord, Emmanuel, Master and Logos, have declared their natural home in the Son of God. The narrator is describing the specific love-based sending of the Son. And God's love does not seek to bring about condemnation primarily, which unfortunately was and is unavoidable, because in the natural world, we are in darkness, whether we like it or not. What initiated God's sending of his son was his love. This explains why Jesus wanted to gain honor for others in God's sight rather than himself. And interestingly, a transition occurs from discussing the world, the cosmos, to the individual, or better put, the one. The whole world is in need of Jesus. Only the one who believes, present tense, in him may receive eternal life, which refers to both quantity and quality of life. We have to accept that the whole world is in darkness and stands condemned. The exoneration of the individual is solely due to the love of God and for those who believe in his name, the name of the unique son of God. Names in the ancient world conveyed both a label and meaning about character. With regard to Jesus, it referred to the Son of God is built into that name, the love of God for the world. Jesus is love. God is love. John then explains that there has been an ongoing judicial process which is reached with a verdict. He says, crisis, a verdict is reached the world has manifested its darkness by showing its self-love and selfishness. The verdict, therefore, by God was to send the light into the world because of his love for the world. And when it came, the darkness saw itself and was revealed, but by the way of contrast solely. It was only in the light that humanity could see that, in fact, it was in the dark. The darkness hates the light, hence it does not recognize it because hate is due to pride and does not want its evil deeds to be exposed. Without the light, darkness feels safe, undercover, hiding, although God has already condemned it. Just think of the darkness of domestic abuse, human trafficking, knife crime, furlough fraud, drug pushing, poisoning by Novichok on the streets of this country. The world is in darkness, but thankfully the light, the light of Jesus has come into the world to help us fight against it. Not coming to the light, not coming to the light just represents staying in the darkness. Alternatively, the one who does the truth naturally comes towards the light. The one who does the truth is therefore the one who believes in the Son of God. And he is the one who will obviously do the truth and is certain to keep the faith in Jesus Christ. Those who commit a sinful act find the light shameful. Whereas the one who does the truth embraces the light as a place of holy sanctuary to escape shame. Doing the truth reflects who God is 
and all good works are rooted in his love. It is in the deepest depth of sin that God's love in the form of the cross of Jesus Christ that makes sense. That light breaking through the darkness, which gives sense and offers encouragement to those battling against the dark. Without light, sin goes unidentified. It is the love of God which has saved us all. It is important to look at our own darkness and see if there is anything there. Shine the light upon, upon that darkness with Jesus. Darkness can take the form of many different things. Some big, some small. Some that might just need identifying to avoid shame. Let us strive to be the light which is filled with God's light. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hear my prayer, O God, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your light shall no one living be justified. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse on all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. In your faithfulness, slay my enemies and destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For truly I am your servant. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as an apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Come, Lord, and visit us in peace, that we may rejoice before you with a perfect heart. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, O Lord, and visit us in peace that we may rejoice with you with a perfect heart. And as we prepare in this time of Advent, Advent we, we think of all those who are preparing for, for this great festival. And in this time, we remember the hope that you, you give us, the that our faith is made stronger with you, that, that life with you is joyful, and that you bring us peace. And we pray for all those who are afflicted by violence within a family situation, that they may see a way out and an end to, to the awfulness of their situation. And we pray for those who continue to work for your people in this time of the pandemic, or those within our medical services and on, uh, on other frontline duties. Be with them and uphold them in all that they do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in this mortal in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead we may rise to the life Im immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen Amen. Amen. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the, the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning. So do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day. 
and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, that we shall be saved. Bless and keep us, this night and always. Amen. <laughs>